Okay, so this video is going to be on quail comp. This is your quail comp. Don't mind the flashing light. I'm in the middle of nowhere and don't have satellite service for my quail comp. Um, <laughs> but this is going to be your quail comp. When you first get it, right here, it's going to say log in. You're going to hit it and you're going to log in. Now, instead of doing what I did, when you hit log in, you're going to hit inactive instead of active. And what that will do is that will log you onto the Quellcom, but not put you on the drive line. Now, after you get done with that, you're going to have your messages start popping up. And the person that has the truck before you, or if you have a new truck, you might or might not have messages. I recommend going in there and deleting all your messages, starting fresh. Now, what's really important on this is four things that you're going to use three mainly one every now and then when the quail comp messes up you're going to use your messages hours of service and navigation the most and every now and then you'll have to log back into the quail comp. you don't use screening every now and then you'll have a media message that will pop up and then your exclamation mark will be red and you have to click that and go and view it trailer management i haven't used yet i've never used it your alarm clock your system settings all that other stuff now one thing you might want to do is go to your settings what this does is take care of your quail comp now if i go to settings you'll it gives you all your information you can select your language with this i have it set up to talk to me through my truck speakers instead of the quail comp speaker so i can hear it you can adjust all your volumes and you also have a high and low volume button right here and that's going to cover all that you don't mess with your time zone your time zoner is set up your display set up everything else is set up mostly you're going to be messing with is probably your speakers and volume that's about it in that one and that covers getting you know your settings set up and your quellcom to where you can hear it everything else is pretty you forget about it really like i'm not even gonna lie like i haven't been able to click any of it because I haven't been needing it at all okay so when you get logged in make sure that you know you don't hit active you hit inactive so it don't throw you on the drive line and you need 15 hour clock starts counting down this will show you the hours that you have available I'm stopped for the night so it's gonna be in the negative you start off you start off with eight hours and it counts down then you go on a 30 minute break and it gives you the rest of the hours to make a total of 11 hours okay this is where it starts getting fun your inboxes is where they send your loads and I'm not going to click on this because I don't want y'all seeing my personal information and the loads that I accept and all that good stuff but as you can see your load assignment destination your load assignment or um, origin it gives you um, speed alerts where um, if there's an area of the highway that uh, the cops have been monitoring a lot and pulling over truckers a lot you'll get a message saying be careful all your information is going to be on here in your loads now they're not going to send you one load at a time you'll get two three four five loads at a time it depends on your driver manager and how good you are at processing this i have my swift book that i got from my packet i got a duffel bag and i don't know if if y'all choose the duffel bag this will be one of the books that come in it this thing is so helpful i fill it out every time i get a load and that's how i keep up with it so let's say you're ready to start accepting loads you get into your truck you've got everything from the garage you got everything you need to go you're done your home time you're ready to rock and roll the first thing you want to do is you want to come to your Quellcom, make sure you're still logged into it and you want to hit compose and you want to go all the way to the top and you want to scroll down to empty call and you want to hit empty call and you want to fill it out your pta for your next load your hours all that good stuff this tells them that you're empty you're ready to rock and roll it's that's what I had to do it confused me the first time I did it because I was like why do I have to send in an empty code and she's like it just goes ahead and sends your message on to um, my computer and I can go ahead and get you rolling I'm like okay sweet send in a home uh, an empty call 
when you get a load and she your driver manager sends you the load and you go to the shipper and you first get to the shipper if you have a trailer or not you always hit arrived at shipper and you send it now the only time you'll fill this out is if you get there and you have to drop a trailer and you'll put your trailer number there super easy okay so you're at the shipper you backed up you're waiting to get loaded everything's going good you're loaded you're ready to rock and roll as soon as you lock your trailer as soon as you put your trailer lock on it and you're ready to roll out the parking lot the f next thing you want to do is send in the loaded call and you want to put your ETA for the stop and your ETA for the next load I usually add an hour to it so for example today uh, the date which would be you know 923 for an example and 0900 well my PTA for next load would be September 15th uh, no the 23rd or whatever I said and then instead of it being 0900 I'd put 10 o'clock because I don't know how long I'm gonna be there I don't know if they're gonna make me do a live unload or a drop sometimes I've got some that says oh it's gonna be a drop and I get there and it's a live unload and I'm stuck there for 45 minutes you'll fill out all this stuff you bill a laden you wait your pieces you bill a laden will sometimes have you wait sometimes it won't me personally i always put ten thousand pounds and i always put five pieces you'll fill out your enforcer lock yes i'll place my force lock if you have hazmat you'll have to put your hazmat placards and you'll put yes if not you'll put no and you always check your bills from on the paper they give you and the quellcom if they match hit yes you go down, got your bill, uh, your bill laden, you got all that. You put your seals. Now, if you picked up a trailer, you'll put it here. If you took an empty trailer to their yard and they made you drop that empty trailer and pick up another one, make sure you put the empty trailer you dropped here and the new trailer you picked up. Some of y'all will have probably already witnessed this when you were with your mentor and you hook to a trailer and you send it and it goes, that trailer is not available. That's because some crazy nut job didn't put that he dropped the trailer there and that trailer is not registered in the computer system as being at that location. That is why. After that, you hit send, you're good to go. You'll get a couple message back confirming it and everything. Now, your next thing. If it's a load that goes to point A to point B, when you get to your final stop, you'll have to hit arrived at final. You click it, you hit send, you're done. If you have stops, you'll have to fill out this form. Now, there's two forms you'll fill out. This is one of them, and this is another one. You'll hit arrived at stop, and you'll put stop number, and then after you put your stop number, then you'll have to fill this one out, your ETA for your next stop, and all that other good stuff after you get done with all of it. And at the end of all that, you have to finally hit, when you get to your last one, you still have to hit arrived at final. And then when you arrived at final, and you're unloaded, and you're ready to accept the next load, you hit empty call. So your driver manager always knows what you're doing. I know it seems like a lot, and when I first got into the truck, I was kind of overwhelmed with it. And I had like little notes written all over my hand and I had like sticky notes so I could remember it. Once you've done it five or six times, it, it gets bedded in your head. Your home call is what you uh, put in when you're ready to go home. You put your driver code, the zip code that you want to be at, and the start date. Now, this is something that confuses a lot of people. When you put that date in, technically swift can have you at that location at any time during that date for example they can have you there at 12 a.m to 12 p.m there is not a set time they have to get you there you can get to that zip code at 5 a.m 1 a.m 10 a.m 1 p.m 11 59 p.m it's not a set time as long as they get you there before the date rolls over and you're not in that zip code and i said zip code that don't mean you're home or down the road from your home it means within that zip code okay now i've 
yet to use any of these. Not even gonna lie. Request, I've not done any of that. I've really not done any of that. I've yet to go to Chrysler. I've yet to cross the border. Any of this stuff. If you're running late on a load, you will have to fill out a Mackerel 22. I've had to do that because of traffic. You just put the order number. It's just a, sometimes it's a TC, TD, FC, something number, and you put that. The time you're supposed to pick up is the time you're supposed to be there that you put, and your delivery date, and then your new one, the one that you're actually gonna be able to make it. And that's all that is. And you go down. Now, when you were with your mentor, you probably had to fill out a Mackerel 27 every day, and that's so you could get paid. Now you have two ad pay advan advances. You have a company one and a personal one. Use the personal one. Company one is for like when you get somewhere and your trailer has to be unloaded and they're gonna charge you to un unload that trailer. That's when you'll ask for that. This one is to get um, $100 uh, when you need it put on your, car uh, your card and that comes out of your paycheck. So use it very wisely. Um, everything else, I've yet to check my com data card because as soon as I get paid, I take it all off so I don't have to worry about it. Um, this is about it for this. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, the farthest I've been down is my pay stuff. Now, every time you back up, you need to fill this out. And what you do is you just put a get out and look and send it and you're done. And they want to make sure you're doing that when you're backing up. And actually get out and go back there and look. Even if it's just one time. One time's better than no time. And then you backing into something and hitting something. And then that goes on your DAC record for the rest of your life. And that affects you getting a driving job. Now, that covers the messages part. Super easy, I'm telling you. Navigation. Not really going to mess with it because it's set up for my load that I'm going to um, Salt Lake as you can see and then the miles I have remaining. I started out at 500 and some miles and this is as far as I've made it and I'll drive the rest of this tomorrow. So if you don't know how the Qualcomm works on the map, you hit the home button when you pull up your navigation you hit search um, search map and then you type in the address and then you hit the address that it pops up and get route. And then it will work and work and then it will pop up now if you need to see road by road directions you hit the little eyeball and that will give you road by road district uh you know steps and everything and it's simple during the day it's set up like this at night that's when you use this little moon you hit the moon and it goes night and then you hit it again boom then you have your volume buttons where she'll talk to you or you can make her be quiet. This is your uh, your light button. You can dim your Qualcomm and at night what I do is I turn it completely off so I can sleep. And then you just turn it back up to the brightness you want. Now, since I'm here at the Qualcomm, every truck is set up different. The first truck I had didn't have this, but this one does. So the ones that does have it, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it. Right next to your Qualcomm, you have this little sneaky bugger. This thing tells you how far you are away from the vehicle in front of you. And it goes up to like, I've seen it go up to 890 feet in front of you. And that will pop up right here in this corner. Your speed will pop up here and the speed that is good for that distance will pop up in this corner. This button right here will set it for day or night. That's night, that's day, that's about it. If your truck is set up like, you know, like mine, which some of them may, some of them might not, this is gonna be your PSI for your drive tires. This tells you how much weight you have on your drive axles from the trailer. I like it because it can kind of tell me if I'm overweight or not. This is your trailer brake. My, fir my, uh, my first truck had it and this truck has it, so I'm kind of taking it's gonna be in this general area. Um, my other truck did not have this here. It was actually on the dash, but this one's here. Um, and that just tells you the gears, you know. I'm, I'm, if, if you don't know what this is and you're driving a truck, 
please stop driving. And if you don't know what this is, please stop driving. Go to a Swift yard and say you need more training. Get off the road. Um, <laughs> and if you don't know any of these gauges up here, please stop driving. Um, but like I said, your truck might be set up a little bit different than mine is. This is gonna be your brake pressure, your fuel gauge, your death gauge. Uh, this is my air tank one and tank two. My other truck didn't have two gauges. It had one with two needles, which I liked better than this one. I, I don't know why I like it better. I just like the one gauge with the two needles. Your speed gauge, your RPM gauge, your temperature gauge, and then your oil pressure gauge. Now, for all the people that I went to school with and they know what I missed, right there's my voltmeter. Yes, I check that freaking thing every day. Every day I check that thing. Uh, you have little plus and minuses here and that will change that. That tells you the trip that you're on. You press this little button right here and you hold it and that will change it. That's supposed to be temperature when you're in drive, but it don't show it. And that shows the hours that I have put on the truck so far. So, so far I've put 13, which don't sound right. It really don't. But apparently I've put 13,761 hours on it. But I'm pretty sure I haven't. I need to reset that. If I can. I probably have to reset everything else for it to go back and I really don't want to have to set everything else because I got it set up the way I like it. But anyways, that's how you go through the menu. This is how you turn your engine brake on. This is your cruise control. Accel um, accelerate and decrease. This is your high, medium, and low jake brake. This is to dim your lights and to bring them back up when you're driving. I've not had to regen my truck yet. I have not had to use this and I've had not to use this thankfully. This will operate your dome lights in the sleeper and these are my utility lights in the back of the truck so when I'm backing up I can see what I'm doing. Then you got your little knobs down here for your um, interior axle, your fifth wheel, and your suspension in the back. If you don't know already, when you drop a trailer, and I'm not saying it to be mean, I'm just saying you don't have to do this. I do it because it's easier on the truck, and it's easier on the ground, and people appreciate it, and it's easier on the trailer legs. Drop your trailer legs until they're about half an inch or an inch off the ground. Pull your kingpin, unhook your lines, get in here and lower the back of your truck. And that will slowly set the trailer on the ground so you can pull out underneath it and your airbags aren't having so much weight taken off of them at one time because then you might have an airbag pop. And then you're shut down until they can get it fixed. Something else that I want to throw in this video because I don't think people believe me when I say that you're going to get a used truck. You're going to get a used truck. You see this? This is my Qualcomm cord. Yes, that's utility tape. And look, it's coming apart right there. You're going to get a used truck. Get used to it. I got this truck. I had to put this on it. That kept falling off the window. I finally just said screw it and I super glued it to the window and it hasn't moved since. Uh, your seats are gonna be worn. I know I say that a lot, and the people that I've talked to, they know to get a seat cushion. I highly recommend it. And I know I'm kinda getting off topic with the Quellcom, but that covers everything with your Quellcom. Uh, if you have any more questions on this and you're with Swift, there is a number that you can call. I can't remember it, but if you want to just go ahead and drop a comment, if you have any questions on the Qualcomm, I'll try to answer them as fast as I can. I am having to work, so I'll have to answer it as fast as I can when I have time and I'm not tired and not sleeping. But that covers everything for that and your distance and some of your other stuff up here if you didn't know. So, thanks for watching.